Now you might ask yourself, what's the greatest rice bowl? They're all good, right? I think you stumbled upon the right place. Oh, hello, don't you forget. We got Papa Tapa, boom, still available, limited time only. Go get it, link in the description. So today we are making the Hawaiian mixed plate, also known as the Hawaiian plate lunch. What is this? It is very simple. Anybody can make this and should make this. If there's anywhere you wanna start on your culinary experience that has a close tie to chefs, a close tie to a strong culture that's easy to make, this is that item. It's got so much flavor, it's gonna pick up your face and you ain't gotta know what the hell hit you. It's usually gonna be done with teriyaki style chicken or maybe pork, sometimes beef, rice. And this is where it gets a little, little interesting, a macaroni salad. Uh, uh. Somehow, these three items, this holy trifecta, creates one of the best combos I can possibly imagine in rice bowl history. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? This is like the meat and three of Hawaii, but if one of the three was just another meat. Now we've got our rice, macaroni salad, a Hawaiian teriyaki chicken, and an undeniably crunchy pork katsu. First, let's talk rice. So it's gonna be two and a half cups or 450 grams of washed short grain rice. Pop that into a rice cooker, cover with two and a half cups or 600 milliliters of water, close your rice cooker and let her rip. After a few magical moments, you'll be greeted with beautifully cooked and textured rice. Okay, macaroni salad. Trust me on this. You do not skip the macaroni salad in a plate lunch. Bring a pot of water to a boil, season generously with salt, add one pound or 450 grams of macaroni and cook for about one to two minutes less than the recommended amount of time because you want this al dente. Drain the pasta and rinse with cold water until completely cooled. Now add to a large bowl two cups or 440 grams of good mayonnaise, two carrots grated, two ribs of celery, very finely diced, three cloves of garlic, very finely chopped, salt and pepper to taste, two tablespoons or 28 grams of apple cider vinegar, and one tablespoon or 12 grams of shiradashi. Mix together until combined, and then add in your cooked macaroni and fold together until fully incorporated. And that's your max salad. This is best if you chill it in the fridge overnight before serving. Next, teriyaki mommy chicky. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That was not good. First, you'll need two pounds of boneless and skinless chicken thighs. Cut those into bite-sized cubes. And then in a separate large bowl, add three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of pineapple juice, three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of dark soy sauce, three tablespoons or 42 grams of rice vinegar, half a cup or 110 grams of light brown sugar. Whisk together until the sugar's dissolved, and then add two to three Thai chilies, thinly sliced, a two-inch knob of ginger grated, then add all of your chicken, mix together to coat fully, and marinate covered, ideally overnight in the fridge. Once marinated, strain your chicken through a large mesh strainer, reserve the liquid, and now heat a large wok over very high heat. Add in about three tablespoons of vegetable oil, half your chicken, sear tossing occasionally until the chicken has some nice color and is cooked through. Place the cooked chicken into a bowl set to the side and repeat with the other half. Once that's cooked, remove, then add roughly half your marinade to your now empty wok, bring to a heavy boil and reduce for two minutes or just until it begins to slightly thicken. Then separately whisk together one tablespoon or nine grams of cornstarch and one tablespoon or 12 grams of water until homogenous. Start by adding half of that cornstarch slurry to your boiling sauce and once it thickens, determine whether or not you need to add more slurry to thicken it further. Now add all your chicken back, toss to coat, cut off the heat, add two cloves of very finely chopped garlic and toss to coat once more. That's done. Move on to the katsu, which is arguably easier. You need four pork chops about one inch thick each. Ideally, a nice heritage chop will get you a better tasting and more intramuscular fat. Remove from the bone if needed, beat your meat until it's about half an inch thick, then spread out nicely, season generously with salt to taste, then get your three-tier katsu breading setup going. One medium bowl with one and a half cups or 225 grams of all-purpose flour, another medium bowl with three eggs plus a splash of water beaten together till homogenous, and finally two cups or 150 grams of panko breadcrumbs. This is the easiest thing to bread in the world, okay? First you go in the flour, coat all sides, dust off the excess, then into the egg mixture, coating every little crevice, and finally press aggressively into the panko breadcrumbs until you get a beautiful crust. So good, it practically already looks crispy. Now get a frying vessel, like a six quart Dutch oven, filled with enough vegetable oil to give you around two inches of depth, heat to 350 Fahrenheit, and then plunge one to two katsu at a time, carefully laying away from you, and fry for three to five minutes or until a beautifully golden brown, and the inside of your pork is just cooked through, around 150 Fahrenheit. Now pull it out from the oil with a spider, drain it onto a wire and while it's still piping hot, season immediately to taste with salt and a light sprinkling of shimi togarashi. Now, assembly is specific, but simple. First, you're gonna need an ice cream scoop with the click release button. Put not one, but two scoops of rice onto your plate, followed by one generous scoop of macaroni salad. Of course, a little bit of green onion on your macaroni salad is fine as well. Then a generous scoop of teriyaki chicken. And last but not least, your pork katsu sliced beautifully. And as for the meat, the serving size is up to you and how much you can eat. Now let's taste test and maybe have a bed nearby in the event we need to take a nap until the next day. The Hawaiian mixed plate, also known as the Hawaiian plate lunch, or vice versa, whichever you prefer. Only eat this if you have either A, worked out, or B, plan to go to sleep. One of my favorite meals of all time, it has everything you could possibly want, it is carbohydrate, heavy, heavy. protein, meat, heavy. One of my favorite things. Teriyaki chicken, pork katsu, rice, macaroni. Seems a little out of place, but it's never had a better home. Dress it up how you want. You can have it as is, or you get a little bit of... 
A nice katsu sauce would do well. I don't care what you say, I love macaroni salad. A little bit of pork katsu. Uh. This is in my top three rice bowls. Depending on my mood, this is number one at the list. But it has just about every texture and flavor you could want. And of course, it has that nice rice, fluffed up, beautiful, chewy, but also somehow light. The chicken's rich, salty, it's got a little bit of sweetness, garlicky, and of course the pork katsu is just super meaty and savory and crunchy. So where the hell does the mac salad come in? It's a palate cleanser. Hey, this is hot, spicy, warm, and then all of a sudden there's a cool, refreshing little there couldn't be a better combination of ingredients on a single plate. Hawaiians, we thank you, we love you. But you wanna know what else we thank and love? B-roll.